guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, bringing it to you on this first day of Gemini season. So Leo and I are wishing our May and June Gemini babies a very happy solar return. All the best on your next trek around the sun. So yeah, feels good. All right, so this reading's not date or time specific. Whenever you come upon it, if it speaks to you, could be your message at that time. I do like to let you know what's happening in the cosmos generally. So we do have, we did just have Jupiter and the sun conjunct on the 18th, the luckiest day of the year, every year. So I hope you felt some good energy from that. We have the full moon in Sagittarius coming up on the 23rd. Uh, I'll be uploading um, a special reading for that. Okay, so here we go. Pulling from Cosmic Journey to activate the reading. Oh, how perfect for Gemini. It says, it's card 41, your greatest joy pollinates the world. Yeah, see, he agrees. Your greatest joy pollinates the world. Um, and for those of you who have lots of Gemini in your chart, that's the general aura, <laughs> is sunshine, flowers, butterflies, rainbows, daisies. That's what I think of when I think of Gemini. And my sister is a Gemini, and one of her favorite phrases is, want to get together for something cheap and cheerful? <laughs> sums up sums up my Gemini experience in the world. So cheap and cheerful. Here we go. All right, guys, I'm going to pull. This is a Twin Flame Soulmate um, update. So I'm going to pull the, ooh, I love this. Pull the spread, and I will uh, walk you through the positions of the cards. And then, um, you know, with my general impressions, and then we'll get the clarifiers for the details. So. The center card is sort of the present energy in the connection. It is about choosing the path forward, figuring out what you want and what you've got to set in motion. Um, now, um, right here, this is sort of presently where you are at with regard to this connection. Maybe feel feeling somewhat um, cast aside. You could fe be feeling ghosted, abandoned, rejected. Um, maybe uncertain, there could be some instability or insecurity within the relationship, meaning it's not on solid ground to some degree. Five of Pentacles also talks about worth and value. So on some level, you could be feeling devalued. Your person, on the other hand, with the Six of Pentacles, um, is sort of contemplating what's needed to bring about some generosity here, a back and forth, right? How can they give as well as receive? Uh, your karmic challenge, my friends, the nine of wands, which is about persevering, meaning that this moment here where you're sort of feeling um, cast aside or disavowed or shunned even in this connection, your karmic challenge is about perseverance, is about pushing through the struggle, even though the struggle may be very real, sometimes it isn't permanent and long lasting. Uh, your person's karmic challenge is about having the will to take action and move forward. So the fact that they're coming through with this, you know, well, where, where can I be generous? How can I be generous? How can I be reciprocal in this relationship? Meaning that they are aware that that's necessary, but they're not quite sure how to make it happen, how to set it in motion. That's why their karmic challenge is the chariot. Um, here is the opportunity is you are um, the divine creator of your life. The magician is um, clever, <laughs> if not by half. Uh, it is uh, the card of Mercury, which is uh, the ruling planet of uh, Gemini and Virgo as well. But the ma magician is talking about manifestation and having all the tools at your disposal um, to manifest what you desire. So if we're starting with the two of wands and we're kind of out of sorts in terms of what we're giving and receiving in this connection, meaning it's feeling a little one-sided to you and your challenge is to persevere and theirs is to get up the will 
right? It's all about the manifestation. And then divine guidance is two of pentacles. So I'm going to wait to pull clarifiers on that because there's a million different ways this could go. But just on the surface of it, that two of pentacles looks like it's a stalling for time energy coming through. Like just keep all the energy. It's a juggling act. Keep all the energies moving is the divine guidance. But we'll, we'll get more from the clarifiers. Here we go. Two of wands. the sun five of wands six how do we get beyond this you know um turbulence this tension that conflict right we both want to be happy choosing the path that leads to our ultimate happiness um and pushing past and getting past whatever bump in the road whatever snag you've hit here whatever feels like tension or conflict, whether it's between you or coming from an outside source doesn't really matter. Conflict is conflict. It's stressful. It puts stress and strain on, a, on any relationship. So it is about choosing the path to get beyond that. So let's look at your five of pentacles here. Yeah. I think you are really feeling forsaken and in a one-sided relationship with your divine masculine. Um, feeling like you're getting short, you know, the short end of the stick here. It feels like it's an unfair situation. Um, and you're feeling rejected. Feeling devalued more than anything. Oof. And now they're aware of this. So six of pentacles. Three of Wands, Three of Swords. Um, this person seems to um, it's like they're anticipating some continued heartache, hurt feelings. They're resisting any effort at giving here. They're just resisting it. I'm not sure what the full measure of that storyline is, but it feels like this person is anticipating more problems and more disappointment and maybe you feeling more hurt. So they're resisting this energy of the give and take of it all, of being generous with, with anything in this connection, with their time, with their attention, with their effort and energy. And you're feeling this. You're feeling their resistance, for sure. Feels like an unfair fight on some level. You could literally be fighting. There could be a fight here with that five of wands. Certainly a lot of tension. Wow, okay, so that's where things sort of stand. The karmic challenge. Oh, okay. I'm afraid he's got the zoomies, guys. So if he starts going, <laughs> I can't even say it. Like he literally loses his mind. If that begins to happen and I fade out and fade back in, it's only because I have to put him behind a closed door. I hate to do it, um, but just wanted to let you know in case that happens. Oh, I can hear him run, running around. Oh, there he comes. All right. <laughs> yeah, picking the wrong time for that energy. So if we're looking at your karmic challenge, it is it is about the happiness that you seek in this relationship, a past life soulmate energy, consideration of this person in your life here in 3D, potential life partnership, someone who shows up for you, has your back, treats you well, the happily ever after. And so your karmic challenge is about perseverance and, and and the exhaustion, right? Like there's some exhaustion that may be settling in here that's sort of wearing you down a bit. And so your challenge is about the perseverance. And let's see this person's challenge, karmic challenge is the chariot. Wow. 
the will to take action, to say what needs to be said from the heart, to, right, to um, push forward with uh, messages from the heart, something sincere about how they feel. Maybe an apology is necessary in this situation. For some of you, that will certainly be the case. And the Knight of Pentacles underneath is reminding this person that, you know, it's more important to um, take action and make offers with conscious intention instead of on the fly. So it is about the will to move forward, to um, come through this situation victoriously, to take the lead, to take the reins of the chariot, literally, to speak from the heart, and then to be clear and certain of where things are headed. Beginning with the end in mind, crossing T's, dotting I's, not missing anything that's really important. The knights make offers, and in this case, the Knight of Pentacles um, does so with conscious intention and sometimes um, proceeds with caution, and that's okay. But what's happening here is this person is just anticipating the worst, right? Like their ship coming in is only bringing more heartache the more they give. This is their take. This is how, that's, this is their... Um, how they're sizing up the situation, their perspective. Thank you. I was missing that word, which is why you're meeting with all this resistance in their karmic challenge is about, well, you don't have to move. You don't have to take action on impulse. You can think it through, but whatever action you take has to be sincere. Messages have to be, um, you know, uh, uh, vo expressing some measure of vulnerability so that it's trusted, because right now, not so much. Not trusting this person's intentions based on behavior. Okay, so the magician in the opportunity. Wow. This is the... Um, I feel the opportunity is being hidden, uh, and the true opportunity is the is this. This is your card, Gemini, the lover's card. It is choosing this connection of your own free will, not laying blame anywhere, not you know finding fault in each other, not expecting the worst. Um, the you can run, but you can't hide situation. I feel the seven of swords is coming through as a little bit of a decoy to throw, throw you off the scent. I feel the opportunity is to manifest the choosing of this connection, this sacred connection, this twin flame soulmate connection, and just taking the next best step forward. This is a learning process. Whenever we say, see the page of pentacles and pages are messengers, yes, but the message here is there's something to learn. So you want to take it one step at a time. That is what you're manifesting. And you don't want to be thrown off the scent, off the path, off the trail um, by avoidance mechanisms and techniques, by things that lead you to question each other's motivations and intentions. So then Spirit's saying, okay, so find your stalling mechanism. I, I absolutely see it as a timing reference. Divine guidance. Right. Wow. If things are going to fall apart, that's why you're being, you're being called... Um, Divine Guidance is talking to you first about stay positive. It's hard to, but that page of wands comes through as playing out behind the scene. Um, a, a message of, you know, that's optim optimistic, positive. Um, that's sort of seeing the situation as glass half full, but you're buying time here. That's Divine Guidance coming through. In case it's not sustainable, in case the connection isn't going to be able to move forward, stay optimistic, wait for a positive message, but just keep the energies in motion, um, buying time while you see whether or not you can sustain this connection going forward. So potential tower moment looming, guys. Not, not you know, I pull the cards, I read the cards. 
but it's a potential. It's not a given. You're being guided in this situation as you're trying to kind of manifest the choosing of the of each other. You, you kind of got to stay reality based and the two of pentacles affords you the time to do that. Right. And, and the thing with the two of pentacles is if you look at the card and in most decks, you'll see there's like a, a raging sea and the boats are getting tossed like they're little um, toys in a bathtub. It's not. It's a raging sea. And the two of pentacles, the little jester here has his back to it, not not like buying into the storm and just keeping the energies moving as and he's assessing what he's really dealing with in real time. So that's what I'm seeing here. What are you dealing with in real time? Stay positive, but be prepared for the other shoe to drop. My goodness. Okay. So what I'm looking at here is someone that you have been considering a divine masculine who um, for some reason has pulled back on being equally invested in the connection. They're defensive. Um, they've got their own challenges about the will to move forward and to sort of plot the course going forward. And your, your challenge is to kind of tough out the waves here in the stormy sea. That's what I'm getting. Um, I do want to take this to the extended and I'm going to give you the astrology here in just a second. But the whole point of this is to kind of figure out where are, um, where are the gaps, right? Let's fill in the gaps in the extended. What, let's look at this person and maybe what's going on with them will help you see why their perspective is the way it is right now. We'll see how they're going to approach you, their intentions, um, and we'll get some additional messages. For example, what are the hidden energies and what do they want you to know? What's their message to you? So we're going to look at that as well. That's what I have for you. If you are enjoying my readings, please, by all means, subscribe below. Don't forget then, once you have subscribed, if you click that little bell, you'll get notified of um, my latest uploads, okay? So here's the astrology. The sun is Leo energy on this side. Emperor is Aries. We have king of pentacles is Taurus. Chariot is Cancerian energy, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio in our page of swords, uh, cups, sorry, and the King of Wands is more Leo. And then we have um, King Knight of Pentacles is Virgo. Here we have the Magician is Mercury, which rules Gemini and Virgo, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn in the page of Pentacles. Oh my God, he's crazy. Gemini in the Lover's card. And then we'll close out here with Mars, um, which rules Aries in that tower, and Aries Leo Sag in the Page of Wands. That's what I've got for you. The links to the extended, excuse me, get down, get down. Don't stare at me. You know what get down means. All right, guys, the links to the extendeds are below. I will see you there in a second. Happy birthday, Gemson. Bye.